All this crap in food is to destabilize the computer electrochemically. The body computer on one level is an electrochemical entity, organism, and it has need to have a certain chemical and electrical balance to function mentally, emotionally, and physically in its optimum state. So what they're doing now is um, bombarding us, and have been for some time, especially young people, children, with all this electrochemical crap to destabilize the body computer and its uh, um, receiver transmission levels so that we are operating on a fraction of our potential. Same with the drugs that they're throwing at uh, people, not least the children. So many of these people, these kids that go crazy with guns, almost all of them in the end turn out to be um, drugged up with this stuff. Aspartame, the uh, sugar substitute, um, is a brain suppressant and rewirer, which was brought onto the market as head of cell pharmaceuticals by this guy, Donald Rumsfeld, who keeps coming up in many guises, who sold out for a fortune to Monsanto, who now own aspartame. Fluoride, that lady Anna Bly up in Queensland is putting uh, fluoride in the Queensland water. They put it in the water of concentration camps in Germany to suppress and make docile the inmates. Fluoride is a brain suppressant. Monsanto, again, comes up again and again. The home of genetically modified food. Why? Because it's to genetically modify us. Genetically modified food affects human DNA. And I'll give you an example of, of just how... I'll give you an example of just how detailed this is, because what it comes down to on so many levels is there is a level of knowledge here about how everything works, and then there's a level of knowledge that the public are allowed to have. I'll tell you a story I came across um, only last week. We have a, uh, um, a, 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 a treatment for cancer called chemotherapy, which is equivalent for most people to assisted suicide. Stone Age medicine. What chemotherapy does, as we are at the cutting edge of, of knowledge, is uh, kills cells. That's what it does. It kills cells. It doesn't kill cancer cells only. It kills all cells. And the question is, do we kill enough healthy cells to kill the patient before we've killed the cancer cells to rid of the cancer? So what they're doing now is, um, some people anyway, they're trying to find drugs or a biomarker that will put into cancer cells which will only uh, attract the drug and the healthy cells won't. What it turns out, actually, this guy, Professor Dan Burke and, uh, in, in Britain, has established, is that cancer cells already have a biomarker and have always had a biomarker and he's called it CYP1B1. It is an enzyme that only appears in cancer cells and not healthy cells. What he then did was get with another man, Professor Potter at Leicester University, who came up with a substance found in many fruit and vegetables, which is called salvestrols. That's what they call it. And they found this. The CYP1B1 enzyme, only in cancer cells, interacts with salvestrols that we get from fruit and vegetables and turns it into a cancer-killing agent. So we have had a natural cancer response system. As long as we eat fruit and vegetables in rich numbers with these salvestrols in them, when we get a cancer cell, the CYP1B1 enzyme within the cancer cell, but not in the healthy one, creates a chemical reaction with the salvestrols and kills the cancer cell and doesn't harm normal cells. You get salvestrols in those fruit and vegetables that are subject to fungal attack because the salvestrols are what the fruit and vegetables produce to deal with a fungus attack. And the reason salvestrols work against cancer, because we're going to find out, and it's going to be uh, established eventually, cancer is actually a form of fungal attack on the body. Now, this is where I'm going. In the 1950s, they introduced chemical farming. From the 1950s, we have had an epidemic of cancer in the Western world. So what is the effect of this? 
Because they've been using fungicides on fruit and vegetables, they've been killing the funguses and the fungal attacks artificially, which means the, pl- the fruit and vegetable plants are no longer producing salvestrols to, to, to deal with the fungal attack because it's being done externally for them. But here's the killer that they, they know what they're doing. The most used fungicides used in the world have another effect. They neutralize the effect of CYP1B1, the enzyme in cancer cells. So you can eat all the salvestrols you like, but if your body accumulates the fungicide poisons through eating these foods, it won't matter anyway because the salvestrol will not be activated as a cancer-killing agent because the enzyme within the cancer cell has been neutralized. And after 20 years of research of these people, that is absolutely no accident. They know exactly what they're doing. And that's why in America now, this bill um, is going through to make it virtually impossible for people to produce organic food in America when this bill goes through. Because if you eat organic fruit and vegetables of this type, then you have, you, they are rich in salvestrols because they're still producing them to fight off fungal attack because there's no fungicide getting in the way. Vaccines. 25 vaccines by the age of two. A emerging... A growing immune system gets attacked with that shite in that period of time and we think that children are going to grow into adults with immune systems that are as effective as they could be, you're having a bloody laugh. And these uh, things that vaccines were supposed to get rid of were in free fall between the va- before the vaccines came in. Another scam. And of course the Immune system is the antivirus system. If that's not working, we become open to endless other attacks, which is what chemotherapy does in cancer treatment. It kills the cells in the immune system, which is why people that have chemotherapy have um, shot immune systems that open to other things. And so there's also a, an attack going on now, as we've seen through this uh, um, organization trying to um, reduce the doses and the sources of food supplements and stuff. It's all an attack. This guy... Uh, Codex Alimentarius, um, which is trying to uh, create um, regulations that basically make uh, food supplements and other things a waste of time because of the doses and the the, uh, quality of them. And Codex Alimentarius came out of the people behind the IG Farben chemical cartel, pharmaceutical cartel that was behind the Auschwitz concentration camps and much more. And this guy, Fritz Tamir, who was jailed by the Nuremberg trials, for seven years for war crimes and was got out after four thanks to Nelson Rockefeller, his friend in America. Um, He was the man with others in the 1960s that set up Codex Alimentarius, which is now um, uh, trying to destroy our ability to um, bridge the gap between what we used to get from fruit and vegetables and food and we don't get now. It's mass culling of the population. That's what they're after. And international law, international regulations is the way they're doing it. The reason international law is the, now, is the code word that you, or term that you see all the time now is because if you want a world government dictatorship, you have to have laws that everyone on the planet obeys and has to obey. That's where your dictatorship comes from. And that's why international law, international regulations are coming up everywhere. Same with this electromagnetic uh, soup that we live in now. It's attacking the body electromagnetically uh, and electrically to stop us um, uh, operating on the level that we can. In areas where lithium in trace amounts is in the drinking water, there seems to be a lower level of suicidality. And in the Texas counties that were studied, there's actually a lower crime rate. Mercury containing vaccines may help not harm kids, according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. The theory is that very low or trace amounts of lithium enhance connectivity between neurons. And doing that over the course of a lifetime, a lifetime exposure, makes the brain more healthy. Turning to health news, there's a new ridiculous claim that the Harvard study showing that fluoride is dangerous, it causes brain damage, is somehow not affecting people inside the United States, only in China. Sadness.
sunniest days No longer seem to bring a single out to joy, man Knowing the truth but lies beneath It's like a make a man proud man cry carelessly The rainy days that collect in your heart Seem to stay every single day They don't go away Now while this goes on, we're getting colder Not a single left to out the good and us so low this endless rage that's in my heart It comes together, splits apart I don't know myself anymore I try my hardest at the door I cannot see this the other way I cannot see the wall to stay In this world that just takes away See a glass shatter in my face Looks like it was a mirror Couldn't handle my grace If angels cry and devils lie Why is it half the time I'm crying And half the time I'm lying It's cause we're raised in a sort of thing that makes us see good, but wind up doing evil things Not knowing the heart of men is corrupted and tainted by a false messiah again This endless rage that's in my heart, it comes together, splits apart I don't know myself anymore, I try my hardest at the door I cannot see this, not the way I cannot see the wall stay in this world that just takes away Most of the cells are dead or dying. This demonstrates the toxicity of this material. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film, which you have just seen, is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides, and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. Poisonous sodium fluoride in these concentrations may not be toxic enough to kill the cells or to destroy an organ or possibly the individual himself. Nevertheless, in human bodies, such poisons are subtle, insidious, and if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. Outward manifestations of such toxic effects may not be apparent at the time to the victim or to his physician. But the constant drinking of fluoridated water may bring about a gradual accumulation of damaged and scarred tissue in the various organs, resulting in the production of many vague complaints in some or in nearly all parts of the body. This makes it most difficult for the physician to diagnose unless one is very alert to the effects of fluoridated water.